Bowser's Fury is a really weird 3D Mario game, and the game is definitely not without its problems. The whole thing is just a couple of hours long, 99% of the enemies and obstacles are recycled, the little original content is repeated over and over again, the Bowser's Fury mechanic gets old really fast, having shines tied to just standing in front of blocks during Bowser's Rage is a really tedious mechanic, whenever Bowser attacks the game struggles to even maintain a healthy 10 frames per second, some of the islands are so insubstantial that they didn't even get their own music tracks, and to top it all off, it also checks all the boxes of Nintendo's most annoying current design habits. The game has tons of problems and in this video we will talk about none of them. Because at the end of the day I absolutely loved my time with Bowser's Fury. I think it is an amazing game and much more importantly this little innocent looking experimental title actually manages to do something remarkable. The game solves the 3D Mario paradox that Nintendo has been struggling with for decades. So today we are going to take a deep dive into the 3D Mario paradox. We are going to discuss how Nintendo managed to pull off the impossible with Bowser's Fury and what implications this might have for the future of the Mario franchise as a whole. So are you ready? Let's do this! So to understand how Bowser's Fury solves the unique problem of the 3D Mario series, we first have to take a look back at how the 3D Mario series evolved in order to establish a bit of fluff. So in 1996, Mario makes his first appearance in 3 dimensions with Super Mario 64. Mario 64 is one of the very first 3D games and as such the team has to solve tons of problems that devs nowadays simply don't have to worry about anymore. Since crafting stages was such a hassle back then, the team only built 15 different and unique levels that Mario explores over and over again. To make sure the game is enjoyable even though content is repeated often, they spend a lot of time perfecting Mario's movement so that the simple act of moving through the worlds is as fun as possible. And Mario 64 ended up being fun. It became a huge success and thus they doubled down on this idea in Super Mario Sunshine. In Mario Sunshine we once again explore interesting stages, this time together with everyone's second favorite flash liquidizing ultra dowsing device called Flood, while jumping around using one of the very best movement systems Nintendo ever made. The focus in Sunshine is once again on controlling Mario and on exploration. And as Mario 64 before, Sunshine ended up being a ton of fun. But the moment to moment gameplay of Super Mario Sunshine has pretty much nothing in common anymore with the gameplay of the original 2D Mario games. But this changes when Mario makes the jump onto the Wii. In Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, Mario's movement options are drastically reduced. Instead of focusing on exploration with incredibly fun movement mechanics, Galaxy focuses onto the different levels. Galaxy is much more linear. Instead of exploring sunny beaches or jumping through wide open plains, Mario suddenly infiltrates linear cookie factories or follows predefined paths to blow up gigantic and apparently really evil Bowser toys. And then Nintendo releases Super Mario 3D Land and shortly after 3D World. And those games have nothing to do with 3D Mario's origins anymore. There is no open exploration in those games and Mario's movement is tuned down to an absolute minimum. Like we even lose the ability to triple jump. Instead the game now plays out entirely like a 2D Mario game but in 3D. We choose a linear stage on a world map, jump through an entirely linear level and have to make it to a famous flagpole at the end before a timer runs out. 3D Mario is now just basic Mario with an additional dimension. That is, until very recently. But with Super Mario Odyssey, Nintendo suddenly completely changes the direction of the series again. Super Mario Odyssey goes back to Mario's roots in 64. Odyssey famously focuses on movement and exploration, with most of the platforming challenges being tucked away into completely separate rooms. The exploration and the movement in Odyssey are fantastic. But those separate platforming challenges? Well, those separate platforming rooms are definitely fun, but at least in my opinion, they never really manage to reach the insane heights that 3D World's levels are able to reach with their much more linear approach. History lesson over and out. So what is so remarkable about the history of 3D Mario and why did we just take a look at all of this? 
Well, the thing is, there is no clear defined idea of what a 3D Mario game even is. Super Mario Sunshine, for example, and Super Mario 3D World are two vastly different games. The gameplay of Super Mario Sunshine has pretty much nothing in common with the gameplay of 3D World. On the one side of the spectrum, we have the open exploration games that focus on Mario's movement and have us revisit stages over and over again, like Mario 64, Sunshine and Odyssey. But on the other extreme, we have 3D World and Land, where each stage is a linear, self-contained experience, focused on moment-to-moment -moment platforming, with the Galaxy games happily floating somewhere in the space between. So here's the catch. Even though there are two completely different types of 3D Mario experiences out there, both those archetypes led to highly critically acclaimed games, both sold tons of copies and both managed to gather loving and caring communities around them. Whenever Nintendo makes a new 3D Mario game that focuses on one of the two different gameplay styles, they will inevitably disappoint fans of the other. So the big question is, why doesn't Nintendo just make a 3D Mario game that features the best of both worlds, you know? Why don't they make a Mario game with the movement system of Sunshine, the exploration of Odyssey, the focus of 3D World, but as varied as Galaxy. Well, I'm glad you're asking, kind, rhetorical person, because this is because of the paradox we chatted about in the beginning. The two different types of Mario experience are exclusive to each other. They can't exist alongside. If a game focuses on open exploration, it can't focus on linear challenges. We either run through a stage exploring every corner at our own pace, like in Sunshine, or we jump through amazing platforming focused challenges like in 3D World, but having the one rules out the other. And that is actually true for a lot of different aspects of the Mario games. We can either have a companion like Cappy in Odyssey that adds tons of crazy movement options and allows for insane trick jumps, or we can have several power-ups that change the way we play a specific stage. We can either have wide, fast and expressive movement like in Mario 64 or tightly designed challenges toying around with crazy gimmicks like Galaxy with its gravity shenanigans. It's like with Game Freak where we can either have beautiful state-of-the-art graphics or a new Pokemon game. It's either 3D World or Sunshine, either Galaxy or Odyssey, 3D Land or Mario 64. But gameplay like in both of them at the same time just isn't happening. One way to design a Mario game is just in direct opposition to the other way. That's the huge unsolvable paradox of the 3D Mario series. And sadly, this is a problem without a solution. When developing Bowser's Fury, the team was in a really unique situation for two completely different reasons. So first, tons of the parts of the game were already finished before they even started. Fury is built on top of 3D World, which means that a lot of the things that actually take tons of development time are already finished. You know, the enemies are already designed and animated. Lots of assets are already there, so is Mario's basic movement system. They have access to tons of different fleshed out gameplay elements, like the invisible ground, the champions and whatnot. All that they have to do is to remix already existing assets into something new, adding whatever is needed. But that's not the only thing unusual about the game's development, because what is even more remarkable is the game's existence in the first place. I can't recall any situation where a remaster got a new, smaller game added to the already existing one. It probably happened before, but there were definitely no insane expectations for Bowser's Fury leading up to its launch. Most of the discussion I saw chatted about Bowser's Fury being a cool bonus game that Nintendo added on top of the 3D World port. So on the one hand, the team sits on tons of already existing assets, while there are basically no customer expectations about how Bowser's Fury should play. This is a perfect framework to focus on the design of the game and to test the waters for a couple of unusual ideas. It is a perfect opportunity to experiment a bit with what 3D Mario could be in the future. It is a perfect opportunity to look for ways to evolve the Mario series and most relevant for us if there ever was a moment to try to solve the paradox of 3D Mario gameplay. Well then, here it is. And as it turns out, well, um, Bowser's Fury manages to pull off the impossible. The game truly feels like an open sandbox where we can go everywhere and stumble into something interesting around every corner, while also being filled with focused and tight platforming. 
One moment Bowser's fury plays like Super Mario Odyssey, but only seconds later it feels as if we were platforming through a tight 3D world stage. One second we have to survive a crazy platforming challenge, reminiscent of the best parts of Galaxy. The next second we explore an open shoreline, searching for cat shards, as if we were looking for red coins in a Mario 64 level. One second we perform fun trick shots, the next second we make our way through a crazy power-up gimmick stage. Bowser's fury actually is a game about open exploration that features tight linear scripted platforming. So how did they manage to pull this off? Well, honestly, it isn't just one trick. It's dozens. What they do with Bowser's Fury and what I personally find so amazing about the game is that they take pieces from all previous 3D Mario games and put them together to create something entirely new. The way Bowser's Fury manages to feel like all the previous Mario games in one is to a huge part because it is actually built out of pieces of all previous Mario titles. The whole map, for example, actually resembles the overworld of 3D World, but instead of just choosing a level, the levels are real islands here that we can approach from every angle. Those islands are usually similar to 3D world stages at first. They feature a clear linear path from A to B. But once we made it through them once, the levels suddenly change. New power-ups like the propeller head and some changes to the geometry often transform them into open, explorable spaces comparable to a Mario 64 level. And that's just how the game is structured. Almost everything is borrowed from another Mario game. The SM symmetrical multiplayer idea with Bowser Jr. is straight up the same as the star bits in Mario Galaxy. There are tons of ideas from Odyssey in the game, like adding objectives after defeating the final boss for the first time, or the design of the map. The cat shine shards are similar to blue coins in sunshine, but this time we actually get a hint system in the form of the small stamp card thingy that gives us an idea where we missed the shard earlier. The enemies and art design are obviously from 3D World. The movement is also 3D Worlds, but it borrows a couple of ideas from Odyssey, which makes it actually possible to do some fun and cool trick jumps. The five cat shines per island are similar to 64's six stars, while spawning a flagpole once we're done with the objectives is straight out of 3D World. But the flagpoles act the same way the pole captures in Odyssey do. The great sea that connects the different islands features tons of content all on its own, while acting as a hub for the different stages, similar to Delfino Plaza in Sunshine or Peach's Castle in 64. The fight against Mega Bowser is similar to the fights against the Brutals in Odyssey, in that there are often openings to damage Bowser even when the Turtle King is on the offensive, and so on. Bowser's Fury just took element over element from all previous 3D Mario games and remixed them in a truly beautiful way until they ended up with a completely new kind of Mario experience. The thing that I find so fascinating about Bowser's Fury is that it is a Mario experience that truly captures the magic of all previous Mario games. It is a great direction for the Mario series and it is truly really cool and encouraging to see how dynamic and creative the 3D Mario series still is. Even after all those years, 3D Mario is far away from stagnation. The year is 1988. A new strange drug called crack starts to appear in cities all around the US. The Iron Curtain is showing first signs of dropping. Who framed Roger Rabbit is running in the cinemas. I am, well, I am busy handling the preparations for my own birth in a couple of years. And Nintendo, well, Nintendo is actually doing fine. The NES is at the height of its popularity and they just released Super Mario Bros. 3. Super Mario Bros. 3 ended up being a great success and it ended up being insanely influential for the future of the Mario series. In Super Mario Bros. 3, we choose which stage we want to play on one of several world maps. The world maps feature different themes like a desert world, a plains world or a beach world and act as a hub for the different levels. Each of those levels is a linear platform gauntlet, focused on a single idea that is then escalated over the course of the level. The game features several returning power-ups, as well as a new power-up that provides a lot of in-air control. We defeat evil Hammer Bros, Koopas, Goombas and fight boss battles against the Koopalings on our journey to save our beloved kidnapped princess. 
and so on. So why are we talking about the structure of Super Mario Bros. 3? Well, because SMB3 basically invented the blueprint that all 2D Mario games afterwards follow. The game ended up being so brilliant that even today, over 30 years later, 2D Mario games still are structured almost in the exact same way. On the one hand, it really speaks to the quality of this formula that Nintendo never really felt the need to change it up, but on the other hand, well, you know, the last time the 2D Mario series changed in any significant way, people were still saying East or West when talking about the country Germany, so that everyone knew which one of the Germanys they were talking about. This formula was able to carry the series for decades, but with the latest entries in the 2D Mario series, it really became apparent that the series is creatively exhausted. As much as I personally love the new Super Mario Bros. series, the four games are basically all just Super Mario Bros. 3 again. But not only did Nintendo run out of new ideas for their latest 2D Mario games, but public interest in 2D Mario also slowly started to fade. And so Nintendo did what they always do when people get fatigued with one of their franchises. They took the poor Mario series and locked it away in their horrible vault to only release it once people are really, really demanding a new game in the series. The 2D Mario series now lives a cozy life alongside all our favorite Nintendo captains from F like Falco to O like Olimar. And you know, honestly, I get why they would do that. The four different new Super Mario Mario Bros. games all released over the span of six years. They pretty much explored all the ideas possible. There isn't that much new they can do with the formula. It's now been over eight years since Nintendo released a new 2D Mario game and we have no idea if they are even working on a new one. So here's the thing. I was honestly never really that sad that Nintendo put the new Super Mario Bros. series into their horrible the games are great, but I honestly prefer them not crafting 2D Mario experiences at all over them flooding the market with the same game every year. But, and this is where this hopefully gets interesting. It is not entirely true that Nintendo stopped to craft 2D Mario experiences because they released new 2D Mario levels very recently. They just released them in a 3D game. I'm talking about the beautifully realized retro 2D sections in Super Mario Odyssey. The first time I played through all of those crazy stages, I was in awe. Some of them have us replay important moments of Mario's past in front of a cinema audience. Others send us through the different parts of a drawn wall fan. Some play around with crazy gravity shenanigans, while others challenge us to stay within the 2D area in order to not become ugly and three-dimensional. But my personal favorite 2D sections are those that toy with the three-dimensional space onto which they are drawn, the sections that have us run around corners or in circles, the challenges where falling vegetables block our view, or the one in the Ruined Kingdom where we first have to set the platform layout before we are actually tasked to platform through it. Those creative and incredibly well-realized challenges really got me to think about how much untouched potential there is for 2D Mario platformers and how many ideas there are that Nintendo never really explored. The 2D sections in Odyssey are, at least to me, some of the absolute highlights in the game. And you know, that is kind of interesting, because not only is the movement in those 8-bit stages far less developed than Mario's movement is in the new Super Mario Bros. series, but they are also just tiny parts of a huge adventure. Yet my favorite parts of Super Mario Odyssey are actually 2D platforming sections. Which finally brings us to the point of this silly little video. So here's the thing, Bowser's Fury is this beautiful experimental title that, despite many flaws, manages to combine the impossible. Fury combines all the incredibly varied ways Mario played previously in 3D into something new that is greater than the sum of its parts. Meanwhile, the 2D Mario series is creatively totally exhausted. Interest is dwindling and, as far as I can tell, Nintendo is so desperate about the future of 2D Mario that they locked it into their horrible vault. Yet Super Mario Odyssey releases with all those amazing retro sections that toy around with the idea of 2D levels printed on three-dimensional surfaces. Those stages are not only highlights of the game, but they are also an idea that has insane potential and there are tons of things possible with it that aren't really explored so far. 
All of this really got me to think if it might not be time to drop the separation between 2D Mario and 3D Mario for the next real mainline Mario game. You know, similar to how Bowser's Fury tears down the walls, separating linear platforming and open exploration Mario, maybe the next Super Mario game could do the same for the separation between 2 and 3D. It could be a game that follows in the footsteps of Bowser's Fury with 2D sections, similar to the creative 8-bit sections in Odyssey. The 2D sections could feature a handcrafted movement system, perfected for two-dimensional jumping on crazy three-dimensional surfaces. You know, have power-ups that make sense in a free and in a 2D environment, like maybe the propeller suit. Have stages where Mario has to change parts of the environment in order to craft a 2D platforming path. Have a boss that switches between 2 and 3D. Have 2D Mario destroy obstacles that block progress in 3D and so on. Odyssey barely scratches the surface of what is possible with the 2D to 3D gameplay. There is just so much cool and unexplored space left to explore. If Nintendo decides to explore into this direction for the next Mario game, then such a game could potentially bring all the different sub-Mario genres under a single beautiful umbrella. Such a game could be Mario 64 and 3D World and New Super Mario Bros. in a single experience. Nintendo laid out all the different puzzle pieces necessary for such a game onto the table, with their latest two entries into the Mario series. Bowser's Fury shows how to combine all the different 3D Mario games into one, while Odyssey shows us how 2D Mario and 3D Mario can work brilliantly together to create something entirely new. The puzzle pieces are here. The only question left for us is whether Nintendo will actually put them together. A game like that just sounds like the logical next jump in the Mario franchise to me. And in all honesty, this is the direction I personally really want the Mario series to go to. But obviously nobody knows what Nintendo is actually working on. But what we do know is that Bowser's Fury, even though it is a very small game, shows a deep understanding for all the different things that make Mario great. On the one hand, the game struggles to even render a single frame as soon as Bowser starts to spit fire. But on the other hand, well, on the other hand, the game is an incredible achievement in Mario game design, at least as far as I'm concerned. But most importantly, Bowser's Fury opens up exciting new paths which the Mario series could take in the future. And I can't wait to find out which one Nintendo is actually taking. So here we have it. How the different 3D Mario games are seemingly incompatible with each other. How Bowser's Fury magically manages to solve this paradox by borrowing from all previous titles. How Odyssey does something similar with 2D and 3D Mario and how combining all of that could be a really exciting next step for the future of the Mario series. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially like combining seemingly incompatible things today and want to hit the subscribe button, even though we both know which other channels you're subscribed to. I hope that you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!